The beginnings of Helsinki, the roots of it, were in my desire for a community. I'm walking, walking on air. I have left all my blue days behind. I have a huge respect and regard for artists, and I think a lot of the energy that we put into Helsinki has to do with collaborating with them. Understanding that art needs a space, it needs a safe space, it needs support. I started out playing Club Helsinki in Great Barrington. And that was the beginning of any hope of having a musical career. The idea was planted in my head in, in that club. Pause and get your book out. Stay in your hand. Deb said, Oh, you, you got to come out and see the club. When you see the club, you'll want to live in Hudson. I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm, what if I, I could move to Paris? I have nothing to do right now. And she said, well, just come out. And she was right. So I saw the club, and now I live here on the grounds of the club. We produced Odetta in Great Barrington, in Little Helsinki. And she arrived and she looked around and she said, the walls speak. And uh, the walls here speak. You know, the, the, the building was built in 1846. It's brick and made from the clay on the Hudson River and hemlock beams, which were local. Local, which is now becoming a buzzword for things, used to be the way it was. You know, back to the beginning. And literally, the, the building presented itself as, as going to be a, a perfect sanctuary for music and for art and for community and to do all the things that Deborah and myself want to do with people. Form evokes function. And so the building might follow the past function, but it anticipates the next, not really knowing what it's going to be. And so a building that survives is evoking a new use. And we walk, come along and we say, hey, look at that old building, man, wouldn't that be great? And from that moment on, when someone comes into that space and sees that form, they discover who they are. The thought of a, a venue, a musical venue coming in and a place to have great food at this location really excited me. I just couldn't believe the challenge that they were going to have in terms of actually making this place into a music venue. I've been excited. I've been visiting this place as much as I could, watching the progress. And I feel sorry for the fact that Great Barrington doesn't have Helsinki anymore, but I'm excited for the fact that Hudson, New York does. When a person experiences joy in a place like this, it becomes a place where they come more often and a community comes and, and people are drawn to the place because they know they can experience romance and smiles and a new way of thinking, a new way of hearing something. That's very exciting to me, the way that the community comes together in joy and that spreads and when joy spreads, the world changes. It's been created, handcrafted with all local craftsmen, Peter the Sound Man, was the first one on board doing all the demo. It's been a labor of love. It's a very organic process. I mean, Mark and I early on would always marvel at the synchronicity of events and things happening and people coming into the project just when we needed something to happen, something would happen. Then we took someone else on who was a luthier 
The first thing we needed to do was restore all these beautiful windows, especially after we got uh, a quote for what it would be. To do brand new, not as good windows, we figured, well, we could make work for some money, as it turns out, for almost a year. The luthier skills that he had came in very handily. I've been here for four years. I've seen this from a rotting hole in the world to what we see now. The feeling when I come in and look at all that I've done, and especially when I walk to a part of the building that maybe I haven't looked at in weeks, and thinking about what went into building this particular wall, or, or you know, these columns, or all the many, 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 many different parts of the place. It's this feeling of satisfaction. It has been uh, a building put together with creative reuse in mind uh, from the columns that support the building, um, which are old lamp posts from Springfield, Massachusetts, to doors uh, from salvage yards. And, and, and when we had a, a doorway that we couldn't find something salvage for, then we, we made it from scratch. It's just beautiful inside, and uh, it's going to be a great venue. I know, just looking at it, I can see even the upstairs, the dining hall. There's people asking me almost every week when Helsinki's going to open up in terms of the possibility of having a, either a gala or an event. It's so multifaceted. There's an amazing club and performance space, and there's a restaurant, and there's a recording studio. We got word that this church was available up here in Hudson. We'd already been to Hudson, we already saw it, we already thought it was a nice town. And when we saw the church, it was immediate and we had to get that space to fit everything that we needed. Somebody alerted me of the fact that there's this club down the street that's opening up. I was intrigued by it, so we walked over here and we saw, we met with Mark, and the idea came where wouldn't it be nice, since we have a full recording studio up there in place, of combining forces and having a recording situation here. Musicians using computer equipment have lost the technique of being able to perform as well as record. And since I'm known around the world of using analog equipment and using equipment which forces performance as the first and foremost thing, it made good sense that I then talked to them about the idea of using that idea of attracting groups that would be on, say, their first label deal, attracting groups that were maybe on the road on their own, but doing well, that could have a, a fan base of some sort, and who would be wanting to come to this club because they knew that they had a chance to be recorded, and their recording would be made with a professional equipment mixed at a professional studio to be released and get real distribution as a real CD. When I listen to music and new music that we want to curate in this place or, or paintings that we want to bring in or something, what I'm looking for is something I've never heard before, a sound I've never heard before. When you go to a film, you, you want to see something, an idea that you, and it may be, it may be um, controversial, which is what it's for. I look at art from the perspective of, of what does it do to me? What does it say to me? What message is it sending to me? And I think that's one of the things that, that is so unique about art in general, is that everybody looks at art a, a different way. It makes you feel like you are gonna live forever. Since someone else has felt a feeling that has come from you, it doesn't die ever, because you touch their soul. I love Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald, you know, and they, they touched me even though I've never met them. Like, that, to, to be able to do that is probably like the most powerful feeling that you could ever feel. What the concert hall does, or what the auditorium does, is you discover your community there. That's really where you meet the rest of your town. It's a, a magic thing because uh, listening to music can, it, it almost set off, sets off endorphins or something and causes uh, a creativity of thought and reflection about your own life. It's about bringing people together and music is the vehicle for bringing them together. I encourage people to come out and to enjoy the fruit of art. We're really looking forward to meeting everybody, to having everybody be a part of this great community. Get together and really enjoy music. Helsinki, the experience, is not to be missed. Yeah, something else is going on. It's not the ordinary thing. <laughs>